Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about design of control unit in computer organization and architecture course. First of all, what is the purpose of control unit? A control unit is mainly used for generating the control signals by using that control signals control unit can perform the various data transfer operations between the registers and also between the various functional units generally control unit can be designed in two ways first one is hardwired control unit second one is microprogrammed control unit. In the case of hardwired control unit, the control logic can be implemented with hardware components such as decoders, multiplexers, encoders and flip-flops etc. Whereas in the case of microprogrammed control unit, control logic can be implemented with the microprogram a microprogram is a set of micro instructions. Each and every micro instruction that can be stored in the control memory by using a particular format, that format can be called as micro instruction format. This micro instruction format consists of 20 bits. These 20 bits can be divided into four fields. The first field can be called as AD field. AD field stands for address field. It consists of seven bits. AD field contains the addresses of the micro instructions. Sometimes it may contain the branch address also. Next, BR field contains the type of branch to be used. It consists of two bits. Next, CV field consists of two bits. Based on the status bit conditions, we have to perform the branch operation. Next one, F1, F2, F3 are called as micro operation field. So, each micro operation field contains three bits. F1 contains three bits, F2 contains three bits, F3 contains three bits. So these three bits in F1 can be sent to a decoder. It can produce the eight outputs. Hence we are taking the three by eight decoder. The eight outputs are zero to seven. Among that eight outputs, one output does not perform any operation. That output can be called as no operation output. So among the eight outputs, one output does not perform any operation. The remaining seven, zero to six, perform a particular operations. So seven micro operations can be performed through the F1 field. Next, go to F2 field. F2 contains three bits. These three bits can be sent to the decoder. It can produce eight outputs that are zero to seven. Among that eight outputs, one output does not perform any operation. The remaining seven outputs are used for performing a specific micro operations. So from F2 field, we are performing seven micro operations. Now F3 field contains three bits. These three bits can be sent to the decoder. It can produce eight outputs. Among that eight outputs, one output does not perform any operation. There is no operation output. And also another output can be used for a specific purpose. That output can be called as reserved output. That can be used for a particular purpose. Among the outputs, 
two outputs are not performing any operation. One is no operation output and another one is reserved output. So, only six operations we have to perform through the F3 field. Total 7 plus 7 plus 6 that is 20 micro operations can be performed by decoding F1, F2, F3 fields. So, generally a decoder is a combinational circuit. It can take n number of inputs. It can produce 2 power n number of outputs. Next one, this is the automatic logic and shift unit. It is, a, it is used for performing automatic operations, logical operations and shift operations. Automatic operations such as addition, subtraction, uh, complement, increment, etc. Logical operations such as logical and logical or and complement operation. Shift operations are nothing but shift left operation, shift right operation. From the F1 field, maximum we are performing the automatic operations. From the F2 field, we are performing the logical operations. From the F3 field, we are performing the shift operations. So here, now consider the F2 field. In the F2 field, the decoded output 3 can perform the logical and operation. The logical and operation is performed between the accumulator and DR. Okay. So the data present within the accumulator and the data present between the data register in between them we have to perform the logical and operation using automatic logic and shift unit. Whatever the result we are getting, that result is again stored in the accumulator. Okay. So to perform the logical and operation, we are requiring two operands. One operand is available in the accumulator. Another operand is available in the data register. After performing the logical and operation using automatic logic and shift unit between the accumulator and the data register, whatever the result we are getting, that result can be loaded into the accumulator once the positive clock pulse is applied to the accumulator. Next one, from the F2 field, we are performing only and operation only. Next, from the F1 field, we are taking the decoded output 1. This output can be sent to the automatic and logic shift unit. We can perform the add operation. The add operation can be performed between the uh, content of two registers that are present in accumulator and a data register. To perform the add operation, we are required two operands. One operand is available in the accumulator and another operand is available in the data register. Okay. After performing the addition operation between the content of the accumulator and the data register through the automatic logic and shift unit, whatever the result we are getting, that result is again loaded into the accumulator when we are applying the positive clock pulse. Next one, we are taking the decoded output 4 from the F1 field that can be sent it to the automatic logic and shift unit. Here we are taking the data transfer operation. We are performing the data transfer operation. The data present between the data register can be sent it to the accumulator. So DR is the source register. AC is the destination register. In between them T is there. So transfer of data from data register to accumulator, that data can be loaded into the accumulator 
by applying the positive clock pulse. Okay. Next one. So here from the F2 field, I am taking only logical and operation. From the F1 field, I am performing add operation and a DRT AC operation. Next one. We are taking the uh, fifth decoded output from the F1 field. So it is used for transferring the data between data register and accumulator. Data register and accumulator. And also sixth output is used for transferring the data from program counter to address register. Program counter to address register. Okay. Among that two transfers, okay, only one transfer can be performed through this multiplexer. Okay. So this is the select. This is the select input. By using that select input, among that two inputs, only one input is selected, either from PC or from the data register. Which input is selected from that register, the data can be transferred to the address register. So this is DRTAR, sorry. DRTAR. The data and the data can be transferred from data register to address register. Here the data can be transferred from program counter to address register. Among that two data transfer operations, only one operation is selected by using the selection inputs. If the select input value is 0, so this input is selected. Whatever the content that is present in the program counter, that can be loaded into the address register. Suppose if the selected uh, output value is 1, so we are considering the data register. The data present between the the data present within the data register can be transferred to the address register. Okay, here data register contains uh, 16 bits and uh, address register contains uh, 11 bits. So that only more least significant 11 bits can be transferred to the address register. Okay, so here we have to use the a logical of R operation, either this input is selected or this input is selected. Among that two inputs, one input is selected by using the multiplexer. If the multiplexer, uh, if the selection input value is 0, then we are transferring the data between the PC and AR, from PC to AR. Selected output value is a uh, selected input value is a one. We are transferring the data from data register to address register. Okay, so transferring the data from PC to AR or DR to AR, AR can be performed by applying the positive clock pulse by applying the positive clock pulse whenever the positive clock pulse can be applied to the address register the load input is activated whenever the load input is activated either from the pc or from the data register the data can be transferred to address register okay here also whenever we are applying the positive clock pulse so AC register is ready to load some information from the automatic logic and shift unit. So among the 20 micro operations, I am specifying only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Where I am specifying only 5 micro operations. If 
the remaining 50 micro operations can be represented so the diagram is more complex so that uh, we do not draw we do not draw the remaining 15 micro operations but they are performing by using these decoded outputs only i am mentioning five outputs uh, five micro operations okay to avoid that complexity in the diagram i am specifying only five micro operations the remaining 50 micro operations or 15 micro operations are also performed through this control unit but in the f3 field so it can produce uh, eight outputs among that eight outputs two outputs does not perform any operation one is no operation and another one is a reserved operation the remaining six uh, we have to perform some uh, micro operations but i am not mentioning any one operation from the f3 field to uh, reduce the complexity of the diagram so in this way a uh, control unit can be uh, designed so this diagram illustrates the decoding of micro operation field here f1 f2 f3 are micro operation fields how they are decoded to decode that micro operation fields we are using uh, three three by eight are decoders it can produce eight outputs among that eight outputs each and every output can specify a particular uh, micro operation so here one operation is no operation here one operation is no operation here one operation is no operation and another one is reserved for a specific purpose so in this way 20 micro operations can be performed by using this uh, control unit in the next video we have to discuss about micro program sequencer in the design of control unit i hope all of you understanding this video if you really understanding this video please click on the like button and share this video to your friends and classmates if you have any difficulty for uh, understanding this concept please put your doubts in the comment section i will try to clarify your doubts so please subscribe my youtube channel develop srinivasarao so don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel please refer the previous videos thank you thank you one and all for watching this video